Hey everybody, welcome to this free edition of our Trader Use Group a Weekly Roundup. This is for the trading week ending March 13, 2020. I'm Preston Brent. Thanks for tuning in. Well, this week's theme probably is the same as last week, which I basically said, just think of a bunch of squirrels crossing a four-lane highway. I mean, that's the way these markets were moving every single day. Although this week was the worst week we've had in quite some time. The Dow was down for the week 10.36%. Year-to-date, it's down a little over 18 S&P for the week was down about 8.8%. Year-to-date, down a little over 16 The NASDAQ down over 8% for the week. Year-to-date, it's down 12%, a little over 12 Russell had a really ugly week, down about 11%. Year-to-date, it's down a whopping 27.48%. VIX was really interesting, volatility index. It went from um, 41.91 last week to close this week at 57.83. It's a 27 and a half percent increase. Of course, the world markets didn't do any better. They were all down a uh, double digit. DAX fell 20 percent in one week. Really amazing. Now, the Chinese index and the Hang Seng, the Hong Kong index, they were down, but not as much. So we're starting to see a, a leveling out in the Asian Pacific area, which hopefully will be some good news. Now, the worst or the best performing sector in the U.S. this week still finished down double digits. The communication sector was down about 12.9 percent energy sector down 30.8 percent i mean it was a double whammy there more on that in a minute the trailing pe ratio for the past 12 months is down to 18.90 the ford pe is down to 15.12 <coughs> so it's lower about 20 percent forward projection from prior okay and the yield the annual dividend yield on the s p is already up to 2.35 percent that's a huge yield that is going to attract uh, a lot of money into the equity markets, believe it or not, <clears throat> with the 10-year interest rate sitting at 0.95%. It's off the lows, but it's still very low compared to the dividend yield. I haven't seen a spread this wide in quite some time for the annual dividend yield in the S&P versus the 10-year. Okay, I mean, this this very tumultuous uh, market action this week is just, it, it's it's really just beyond compare, I guess. Um, this past Thursday, we saw the Dow surfer its biggest hit since Black Monday 1987, falling 10% in one day. Amazing, right? Um, economic disruptions. We've had mar uh, lock limit up and down moves this week. We've seen e economic disruptions uh, from this COVID-19 virus. We've also, to compound misery, I guess, to the markets, global markets, we've had this Saudi-Russian oil price war. Um, we've seen about two trillion in market cap come off the S&P uh, so far since we started this year, and a lot of economists are lowering their 2020 growth rate as well. So uh, I think Goldman came out and actually said GDP growth uh, in Q1 is going to be about 70 basis points. Q2 is going to be flat, and then they're going to start to see an upward trajectory in Q3 and Q4. I hope that's the case. Um, if that's the case, and we may not enter into a recession, at least based on their current forecast. Now, if you ask a bunch of uh, economists, they did a forecast. I think about 47 percent uh, say that's the probability of a recession right now. Remember, recession is two quarters back to back of GDP growth. So that's why it's so important we follow this this curve of reported cases in uh, the COVID virus. And if they can get a handle on it, and you've probably heard the term flatten the curve. Well, that's going around everywhere right now, meaning let's get all the cases up front as we can and isolate them, the people, so that uh, it can't spread any further. Um, but should the American economy enter into a recession, we can't expect the PE to dip a little bit lower than where it is now at, you know, 15, 12, which means we're going to get more downside. Line in the sand for me, and I'll show you in the charts here in a minute, is the uh, <coughs> December 20, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the December 24th, 2018 lows. Um, those lows right there on um, December 24th was around the 2300 price level. Now, the markets at that time were pricing in a very mild recession. If this thing extends, then just use that as a benchmark. We came down very low. I mean, our 2020 low price came down to 2380. So just above the 2300 December 2018 lows. If that line breaks, that means the markets are forecasting a worse depression, I mean, uh, uh, recession, uh, which would put further downward pressure on the PE ratio. So that should be kind of the line in the sand for everybody. We're also seeing, though, global 
globally anyway, central banks taking action on putting more liquidity and stimulus to the markets. I mean, we saw this week the UK announced a coordinated package of fiscal and monetary measures. I think it came to like about 15 billion pounds. Um, so they're going to be putting that out. The ECB is going to be announcing a package on Monday. Even Germany's stepping up to the plate. They came forward and said they're pledging unlimited cash to those businesses affected by the disease. And I got news for them. That's probably going to be just about every company over in uh, Germany. Uh, meanwhile, here in the U.S., um, Congress passed the um, the funding needed, the stimulus needed. Now it's going to go to the Senate uh, and see if there's going to be any additional changes to it. We're going to get the feds meeting again this Wednesday. There's a high likelihood of a 50 basis point rate cut. I'm even seeing some people say down to 0%. I don't think it's going to go that far. I think they're probably going to cut 50 basis points more. That's about an 80% um, probability right now. So uh, that's kind of where we're sitting at. So we're going to just expect a ton of stimulus packages next week. So what that means is I think there's going to be a higher near-term probability the market's moving up a little bit, kind of like a dead cat bounce. And then as we start putting these test kits out there, um, we're going to see a lot of new cases uh, being reported. But the markets are prepped for that, should be able to handle it a little bit better. All right. We also saw this past week the VIX close over 75. Uh, really amazing. Haven't seen that since 2008 either. It's the fourth highest level the VIX has been uh, at a closing uh, since uh, 1990, which is when they started, when they actually created the VIX. Okay. Now, COVID-19 kind of appears to be, as I was saying, rotating around the world. Uh, first, China and South Korea. And now, if we follow the same prescription as China and South Korea, then that means we probably have about two or three more weeks to go. And then cases will start to moderate. That's what's happening in, in Europe. Uh, and you could look at all across there. Italy, they've got a, a little bit more of an unhealthy population, uh, a lot of older people. So they're getting hit especially bad. So, I mean, we could see um, Italy, Germany, and a lot of a lot of the countries over in the European Union fall into recession uh, this year, um, or next or this year, rather. So it could be really dramatic for a lot of these people. And speaking of oil prices, I mean, oil supply, is, there's going to be a lot more inventory, so prices are very low with this, this geopolitical risk out there of having uh, a major war between Russians, the Saudis. Um, the EIA, you know, cut its um, forecast for 2020, and rightfully so. At the beginning of the year, before things really blew up, the EIA was calling for Brent crude to average $65 a barrel. Uh, in 2020 and 68 dollars a barrel in 2021 well right now brent is um well below that They're, the the eia is saying well we'll see brent average 43 dollars a barrel in 2020 and 55 dollars a barrel in 2021 so there's a lot to be uh, uh remain to be said here on this markets um the one other thing i'll throw out there for a lot of you option traders out there which i know a lot of you are um, one of the things that we experience as option traders is a widening of the bid ask spread okay, for option contracts. The minute volatility starts goosing up, you can just expect bid ask spreads on every single strike, every contract you come in is going to get a lot wider. So you got to be very careful uh, not to hit the bid or the ask, depending on where you're buying or selling, um, what you're trying to do here, right? <clears throat> So, but market makers are traders too. I mean, they, they've got a commitment. They're given that job basically because they've committed to continuous bid ask prices. So it's their job to supply a bid and an ask on every contract that's assigned to them essentially. So they are essentially key li liquidity providers for those con for that, um, those uh, assets that they're required to trade. Okay, but they have what's called a negative selection process, meaning they can't initiate the trade. Um, you've got to initiate the trade. And then when you initiate it, then they can adjust their book based on where their risks are. And one way for them to handle that in a fast moving market like this is to immediately widen the bid ask spread. All right. And that's how they control their risk. So since every one of their bid ask spreads could be hit by an order, they optimize it. Right. And they've got these models that they can run in there and they see what they need to do. So, for example, I was out there just looking on. Um, I went back and back tested. I took a look at a February 2nd at the money SPX call uh, with about 340 days to expiration. You know, so it was out in time. But I just want to see what the bid ask spread was. And it was only about five points. OK. And then if you go back and you look. Uh, over just a couple of days ago, when we were at a real high volatility peak, it was sitting at 65 points. You know, this is a notional value increase of about $6,000 per contract just on the bid ask spread. In fact, some of the out of the money calls have a zero bid. 
right, and an offer of $10. And we're talking four and five delta, way out of the money, because they know a lot of people are trying to now get smart and cute and, and, and pick up some cheap out of the money calls on a big rush when the markets do this either a dead cat bounce or a bull trap or if it does a v recovery like it did in december which i don't believe it will do so what the market makers do they didn't the, the bid is zero and the offer uh just take a look at january and the offer is ten dollars so they're not gonna you know obviously if you come in you've got up you're going to be paying up double what you would normally pay uh for that kind of um uh, contract that far out in time. So just be real careful of that because you can end up thinking, well, I'm just going to buy some deep out of the money calls because when the markets bounce higher, I'm going to do good. But when the markets bounce higher and the volatility falls, those calls may be flat, you know, and you're not going to make the kind of money you think you're going to make. So you've got to be really careful how you play these kind of markets. Now, if we look at the chart that I have on the screen here, um, <clears throat> you can see here, I'm using an Ishimoku here. And on this Ishimoku, um, on a weekly chart now, because I'm in the green right now, or I'm sorry, I'm on a weekly chart, uh, as you can see right up in this area, right up here. But we're right in this solid green zone, which is traditionally a support zone. Look at that long, long tail. This candlestick almost looks like a, uh, a hammer on a weekly basis on the E-mini futures. Now, a hammer suggests upside action. But until or unless we can get up around the 3,060 or 70 area up in this area here and then hold it, I'm just going to assume it's going to be a dead cat bounce and we're going to come back down and we're going to test, you know, these levels down here again. OK, so that's the way you've got to take a look at it. And to be honest, if anybody tells you they know what it's going to do, then I would stay away from it because nobody does. We only have probabilities and ranges and expectations based on what's going to happen. But the way it looks like the markets are pricing this out um, is if you look at this low right over here that was made, as I said, December 24th, 2018. At that point in time, the markets were pricing in a very mild recession. So it's no surprise that the markets actually came down uh, and the 2020 low was this level right here, which is sitting right around 2380, which was near that 2316, 60, 75 area, because the markets were kind of getting closer to pricing in a mild recession. If this level does not hold and we go below that, then the markets are now suggesting the, re the recession is not going to be mild. It's going to be a lot stronger because at these levels, you've got certain valuation models that just kick in. Uh, and that's going to control some of the algos uh, and so forth. So if we have a quicker recovery uh, in the cases, we're going to see a jump in the in the uh, COVID-19 cases in the U.S. It's just natural because when you pass out, you know, a million test kits or whatever the number is going to be, and all of a sudden a million people are tested, I promise you, it's not going to be zero percent that reports positive. It's probably going to be three to five percent you know, maybe even more than that. So you're looking at anywhere from 50,000 to maybe 200,000 cases are going to be reported literally in, in uh, the next couple of weeks. So what that means for the markets, you're going to see a little bit more fear-induced panic. The markets are expecting it, um, but if it gets too high, then the markets are going to probably sell off on that news. Uh, I think next week could be an, um, a bounce, at least the way it's lining up to be, it could be a bounce. I mean, but again, it's only a, a probability move based on every down move that we have, okay? Like back over here when we started that big down move in Q4 of 2018, we had at this point in time, that was a big move down. I mean, a huge move, right? Like that, okay? And then we had this move up, it kind of gave a false impression and we gave it all up, all the way down here like that. So, <clears throat> We could have this retest down here and we got to check other indicators to see is this just a retest and we're bouncing along the bottom and then we're going to go lower or are we going to break it? OK, if we retest and start moving back up and then we do one of these kind of numbers where we're making higher lows, then you're going to see a lot more money come in a lot quicker and, and that'll get us back up into this zone right up here. OK, so that's a little bit about what I'm seeing right now. Just a very fast summary uh, in looking at this chart. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to say uh, in looking at the chart, let's zoom in a little bit tighter here. Uh, so let me just let me get all my drawings off the screen and let me do this right here. And we're going to come in and we're going to take a look at the daily on the Ichimoku. And I'm not going to go into details on how to read this chart. If you want to, we've got a great session on this in our um, uh, um, 
uh, option masters. We had another session this past Thursday on trading a bear market. Uh, and we went through a number of things that you can experience. So you can see here on the way down, I had a, a support level typed in right here. Okay. And if we look at the futures, uh, there is no uh, divergence here on the MACD line. If I come over here and put it on the RSI, you can see actually a little bit of divergence as some of this stuff is um, uh, basically consolidated. You can see a low point here and then a real low point here. And you can see that divergence right here it doesn't match much on the uh, MACD right so if if I come in here and I show you like again the MACD you can see here there is no divergence at all that's strong selling so when you've got a a difference in opinion from the RSI to the MACD it, to me it just it, it becomes not a valid indicator I mean generally when the RSI gets way oversold like this then you can expect a little bit of a bounce but again it's probably going to be a dead cat bounce all right because if you look at the MACD here the way we use it any move up higher here without the the uh, bullish divergence suggests it's just a dead cat bounce and we're going to roll back over again okay now if we really take it in and zoom in on this thing to a 240 minute I love the 240 minute uh, time frame because it's not a day but it gives you a really tighter view of where things are moving you can see we switched over to a red cloud here so that is going to provide resistance as we move forward in time so as you can see the red cloud is lower in the future what that means is if we can hold these price levels then being able to hold support at a lower level is going to actually be a better thing for the markets and allow it to move higher okay you can see that was our uh, and we had this out here well back over in um, early March when we were getting this bull trap right here as I was telling people we were moving up I was telling our members just expect us to roll over here okay uh, this was um, back in, in March and then boom we rolled over and that was our target and we stayed there you know for about oh, almost a week really and then we gave it all up again and now we're moving up this will now be our overhead resistance sitting around the 27 28 level if we can blow through it and then find support at this level that would be a good thing but I would not expect it so but let's see we had a very strong Friday on news about test kits being available and hopefully the government taking action uh, and this week we'll get all the stimulus packages um, uh, from the uh, Europe and from the US and hopefully that will be enough to get us back into this area up here and use this area right here the 27 28 as a consolidation zone also on the shorter time frame there is still no bullish divergence okay that would suggest that any move up this is just going to be a rollover event all right so don't be surprised if we do get that uh, rollover event so I want to switch my screen over here just real quick let's go take a look at the um, uh, same chart but away from the Ichimoku uh, let me see let me find it here we go right here so we're looking at a weekly chart um, of the um, uh, e-mini S&P 500 futures give it a second to paint on the screen for you now when you see it on the screen you can see we actually the um, the lows for this year put the uh, e-mini futures down 29.95 percent from the highs right almost 30 percent down now year to date uh, we're only down 18.05 percent so that can show you this could be a washout day or a washout week where it flushed a lot of people out and forced a lot of panic selling margin calls selling all that kind of thing um, I suspect we may retest this level I'm not sure if it'll happen very fast like this week because it seems like the market is very fast but we shall see okay you can see the 2018 low that was that low I showed you on the other chart the Ichimoku chart where we hit December 24th at 23.16.75 so you can see just how close they came and if I raise it up you can see all these big lows that were made all the way back the pre-Brexit vote in 2016 was 21.19 the Trump election the lows were 2028 20, we went lock limit down on that night our members were up at 2 in the morning trading that because it was a fun market to trade and then you can see the post brexit vote it actually sold off from 2119 to 1981 and before it took time to come back up all right so the brexit vote was in the summer of 2016 and then obviously Trump was in November in the elections so if and this for us to get down to these levels we would need to see an extension of the uh, COVID virus and 
uh, companies, instead of being shut down for a month and a half or two, give them two to three months shut down. Then we're going to have a we're going to have a harder recession, and you're going to see markets come down and test these levels down here. That would be down around the 2100 level to the 2000 level. And if it gets down there, it would take away every gain during the entire Trump presidency in the first four years. I mean, we came close to cutting it by more than half, as you can see. So that just shows you why the market forecasts are so off right now, because the markets just do not know um, how this thing is going to play out with earnings and the demand destruction with consumers. Um, essentially kind of self-quarantining themselves, all right? So that's what makes it very tough. So in in 2018, we had a recovery like that, and this part of the move was essentially a Powell mistake, you know, and that's why we had that V recovery. However, here is not going to be that kind of move, all right? I think what I'm expecting, well, I know what I'm expecting. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I think this is what a lot of market participants expect is we're going to have a move that kind of looks something like this. We're in the I part of the move now, and then we're going to kind of bounce around a little bit. Now, we may go lower, but whenever we finish the I move, it's going to go like that. And then eventually it's going to start going up. So it's going to be that kind of recovery, you know, more of a of a U, a wide U base kind of recovery. But it's going to be quick once the cases start coming down. So what do we need to look for? One thing we need to look for is the number of reported cases. Are they starting to come down? When China started reporting reduced cases, the next week they were up 5% and the week after about 4%. So once that happens, then it's not going to be an all clear because then what will be unknown is just how quick companies can get back up and running again. But it'll end that U uh, recovery. All right. And so what we know is something like this. Obviously, what we don't know is the level of this U and that level of the U down is going to basically be determined by just how long uh, companies stay shut down. All right. And it's across a lot of industries. So that's what's got everybody in a flummox right now. You know, if you will, if we come over here and we look at volatility or let's look at the bond market. All right. That's that's um, uh, something that that I want to show you guys. So if we come over here and look at the bond market. <clears throat> You can see here that's unsustainable as well. This was a panic day. A um, friend of mine was trying to unload some bonds, and the, the spread was almost one basis point. I mean, it's huge. The bonds ran up to 191.22. Huge. And then they gave it up, and it came right back down here again. I think odds favor bonds coming back down just a little bit in the more normalized range. You know, we'll see how that works. If we look at the 30-year interest rate, which is associated with the 30-year bond, you can see here that same thing. I mean, we came down to a 2020 low, and then you can see that one candle. We came back up. We were down 0.837 interest rate, 83 basis points, right? Uh, and then we closed the day that same day, or I'm sorry, that same week at 151. You know, so almost a 60 or 70 percent increase in the interest rates in one week. So that hopefully this is more of a flush out kind of week. We'll know shortly, but that's that's kind of what was you know showing on the screen, right? Um, and if we look at the 10-year interest rate note, which drives mortgages, mortgages right now, last week, if you had a good FICO score, you could get a 3.29% mortgage rate. That's why refis are going very strong right now. If you look at the, um, uh, uh, let me find the 10-year interest rate, sorry. If we look at the 10-year interest rate, you can see here, 2020 low, 39 basis points, and then it bounced up hard here. And the reason why is the feds have now started a, a um, uh, now they're calling it QE. They're not calling it non-QE, but they're going into the repo market. They're buying all across the duration, uh, short term, medium and long term. But they, that has the, 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 the uh, impact of driving up the yield spread between the twos and the tens. OK, members we will cover this in a little bit more detail on um, this Sunday evening's um, webinar session for what's coming up for the week. So this is kind of where I'm seeing this. Right. And if we we come over here. And let me just go back here to volatility for a second. Let me show you this with the VIX. You can see here in the VIX, the high for the week was 77.57. If we put it on a daily chart here, which is amazing, we're in black swan territory right here, okay? Um, and we've, we've been here, 
out of the past week, one, two, three, four days out of the past week, we've closed in black swan territory. So what that really means in volatility language is that we're going to stay elevated for at least another two to three months because the markets are now a little bit nervous. Well, not a little bit, a lot. But when VIX goes this high, it takes longer for it to come down than when it's just a two week kind of thing. And even then, a high VIX would be in the high 20s, maybe low 30s. But when you get up to these levels, it's insane. And if we come over here and I put it back on the weekly, you'll see here uh, for our members, I have them labeled zone one through zone five. Zone five is, you know, what's called black swan. Now, that was the high for the 2008 uh, financial crisis that we had 9647 so we we missed it by 20 points remember back then we didn't even know if the banking world would survive and the capitalistic markets as we knew it would survive i don't think we're going that high but being as high as this and being able to close this high at 5783 is is very abnormal uh, for the volatility so we're we're really <laughs> way up there and if i zoom out right so you can just see here, December, um, just to give you an idea, this was December uh, 24th, 2018, right? I mean, look at this. We were sitting right here. That was a high peak here, but here we're up there. Big, big difference, okay? Um, we've had one other peak when we had uh, a couple of scares in the financial market, but these were all financially driven. This is a medically driven kind of thing where companies are forced to shut down because people are just not going to spend right now. They're, they're hold up. There'll be some companies that, you know, uh, it'll be easier for them. And then if we come back and I take it back to 2008, you can see here the last time we were up here was in the financial crisis, right? You can see with these these levels right here, this was where we, the high point for the week, this was the high point for the financial crisis. So if we model this and look at it, you can see here, and it's a weekly chart. We stayed up here a long time. Um, so that means we could, maybe not as long as this, because this was over eight weeks, 10 weeks, uh, a long time actually to sit above the 50 level here it may be two or three weeks so don't expect a, even if we get a strong stimulus package don't expect um, vol to just get sucked out uh, inside a week I just don't see that happening all right so just understand that you should expect it to stay higher for for a longer period of time okay so that's a little bit about what I'm seeing in the volatility market um, <clears throat> If we come over and we look at currencies, we look at the dollar, right? Um, and let's just zoom out here. You can see here that the dollar really came off, and I have to adjust this here. Um, but the dollar hit the 2019 high as the uh, 2020 low, which is 94.63 roughly, almost right on top of it. Um, and then you can see here, um, we're right back up into this grid here. I think the dollar is going to give a lot of that back. Uh, when the markets start to settle down, but right now, and in, 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 um, when the global markets panic, money goes there. Okay. Now, the reason why the yen, if you look at the yen, you can, the reason why it came down is it's part of a big carry trade, and people are unwinding their carry trade. So that means the yen goes in the opposite direction of what it normally does. All right. Um, this was Friday, but you can see here normally in the panic mode, the yen goes up. Uh, and this past week, it was kind of giving it up because of the carry trade. I suspect they were probably taking profits uh, in that kind of move. Okay. Um, and if we come over here and we look at um, uh, gold, I've told you guys, especially our members, you don't want to be in gold in a, in a, a panic market um, or a recession um, kind of area. I mean, if you look at gold in 08 and 09 during the financial crisis, it actually fell a pretty good bit. Okay. And you can see here with gold, it actually made a new 20, um, 20 low, right? With gold, it came back down. I mean, we went from 1704 to 1504 and you may be going, well, why is that? I thought gold was a, a, a fear trade. It's not, it doesn't pay dividends. Um, and it is a different type of fear when you've got markets imploding like this, people need to raise funds. They need margin calls. They, they generally, are they going to throw the baby out with the bathwater? So this could be a really interesting area to just start nibbling at GLD. Okay. Cause once the market settled down, um, like it did in 08 and 09, 
gold outperformed the S and P. All right. So this is why I just, you know, I, I, I coach my members to just be very careful with gold. Um, um, as you as we enter into a recession so just nibbling a little bit would make some sense with me I think we'll get a bounce now the thing that I really like um, here is copper um, copper has really come unglued we're starting to set up I think because China is starting to recover first but if they don't have anybody to export their products to because Europe is it's going to be down hard for the next three weeks four weeks the US is following behind Europe about two weeks lagging so then we're going to be down and we're big buyers of China stuff and so is Europe uh, which by the way is going to change after the COVID-19 it kind of exposed as the, you know as Buffett said uh, when the tide goes back out you can see who's swimming naked and that's going to apply to the US and, and Europe as far as their dependency on China especially for medical supplies that I think that's going to be corrected right away but just looking at this though this would suggest that copper is going to bounce up now we had a great trade that we took before I think it's going to be a great trade this time too I would load up on FCX guys um, in our weekly market watch um, for next for, for tomorrow night i go into more detail on a couple more but i'll just throw this um freebie out here for you guys this one's going to take off i believe um it's it was right here we had a buy signal right in this area here i'm not getting a buy signal now on this um but i would suspect if you just nibble it's only and i wouldn't do the options because there's a lot of volatility around these things and, and the bid ass spreads wider than normal it's almost the price of an option anyway at 753 so or it closed at 753 so picking up you know some shares in this thing um, as soon as the market self-correct I think a year from now it's going to be back up in the 12 to 14 range so that's almost a double 40 percent run so I like that when there are several others that I like too and members I'll cover those um, Sunday evening and let's look at oil I mean oil my gosh talk about demand destruction oil hit a low of 2734 uh, <clears throat> on Monday of this past week that is huge there is no divergence here that suggests that anything moved up is going to come back down again I don't think it's going to retest the 2734 low but I think it's going to stay down for a while that does mean that getting out of the money puts in the oil futures market you know you can come down now really low and pick some of these things up the bid ass spread is very wide so you're going to give up some of that to play that uh, but just you know be careful with it because this thing can come down even lower so if you do a position keep it very small and put a spread on don't go naked in this thing um, but I do believe that it's going to find a bottom down here shortly and I think Russia and the Saudis are going to come to their senses probably in another two or three months or two months um, and then we'll see oil settle in here and probably move back up into the low for, uh, low 40s right now it's sitting at 32.93 so I think it'll be in the 30s for at least another 90 days or so okay um, so anyway guys that was a quick uh, down and dirty and where the markets are right now I gave you guys my input on this stuff um, that's a higher probability move right now I can't tell you if we're going to go down to 2100 use 2300 as a line in the sand for the S&P because that price is in a very mild recession at that price on and, and the way that's arrived at is market technicians go back and if you look at prior mild recessions and you look at PE ratios and then you impute that on this current market that's where it puts the price around 2300 you know plus or minus 20 or 30 40 points something like that but around 2300 if it is going to be a prolonged COVID-19 debacle companies stay shut down a little bit longer it's going to go into a deeper recession and that's going to put us down to around the 2100 area okay so that's why it can go lower you'll hear some analysts saying 2100 2000 is where we could go maybe even lower you'll hear others say I think we've already made the low and we're going higher and the reason why you're hearing such a diap Diab diab diabolical, I guess. Opposing viewpoints is because it's just unknowable right now where this thing's going to go. But I'm just giving you a line in the sand to say if it crosses this switch, then get your mindset on that kind of move. All right, everybody. Other than that, have a great weekend. Make sure you store up on hand sanitizer if you can find it, um, or toilet paper if you can find it. <laughs> Otherwise, just kind of stay in a little bit. Give it another three or four weeks let things settle down and I think we should be okay if people just kind of heed the warnings have a great weekend everybody members I will see you this Sunday evening for our weekly market watch take care folks ciao